Welcome back to Smashing UK Productions. After a short break dedicated to the post-production and our upcoming World War II film, we are happy to present our newest list looking at the top 10 Martin Scorsese films. Number 10, The Aviator. Have you had surgery, Mr. Murray? No. Do you have scars of any kind? Starting off our list is Scorsese's 2004 biographical drama that depicts the early years of Howard Hughes' career from 1927 to 1947. And hold the bag out to me at a 45 degree angle so I may reach into the bag without. With a rich sense of period detail, The Aviator succeeds thanks to typically assured direction from Scorsese and a strong performance from DiCaprio who charts Howard Hughes' descent from eccentric billionaire to reclusive madman. You come in here out of the blue and tell me you're leaving me just like that and you have the nerve to expect graciousness? I expect a little maturity. I expect you to face the situation like an adult who has Don't some... talk down to me. Don't you ever talk down to me. You are a movie star. Nothing more. Number nine, the king of comedy. One of the finest examples of 1980s black comedy, The King of Comedy was unfortunate enough to be largely misunderstood upon its release. However, over time it has become appreciated as a highly entertaining drama that has enough comedic moments to make it a memorable effort from Scorsese. The King of Comedy is a terrific blend of genres and features a fine performance from De Niro as a strangely sympathetic psychopath. But you have not changed. Just a couple of hours ago, do you know who I was talking to? Guess. Your shrink? <laughs> That's very funny. No, Jerry Langford. That's right, the Jerry Langford. He gave me the go-ahead, reader. would you believe it? And you know what? Don't tell anyone yet, but you're looking at the new king of comedy. <laughs> Number eight, Gangs of New York. Is this it, priest? The Pope's new army? A few crusty bitches and a handful of ragtags? I know, Bill. You swore this was a battle between warriors, not a bunch of Miss Nancys. So warriors is what I brought. One of Scorsese's most underrated pictures, Gangs of New York is a sprawling historical epic set in 1863 in the Five Points area of New York City. I killed the last honorable man 15 years ago since then. Shot entirely on location at Cinecita Studios in Rome, Scorsese's drama is a well-executed and impressive flick featuring some electrifying performances from Leonardo DiCaprio, Daniel Day-Lewis and Cameron Diaz. With beautiful production design and stunning imagery, this depiction of 1800s New York is unrelentingly gritty and tense and is never less than compelling. Thank God. I die a true American. Number seven, Casino. Where the f you get off talking to people about me behind my back going over my head? What people? What people would you think I wasn't gonna find out? I don't even know what you're talking about, Nick. No, you said I'm bringing heat on you? I gotta listen to people because of your fucking shit? You're ordering me out? Five years after his masterful chronicle of the inner workings of the Mafia on the East Coast, Scorsese delivered this ambitious and epic look at the history of the Mafia in Las Vegas and how greed, vanity and luck brought it all down. Arguably his most idiosyncratic film, Casino was a visceral and intimate tale of money, sex and what happens to the mafioso when it achieves the pinnacle of wealth and power. And at the end of the day, they finally came to see me with the pictures. Why protect a friend who betrayed you like that? But I didn't want to look at him. I didn't want to look at the guys who brought him either. There is a house. Your Honor, as you can see, my clients are elderly and infirm. Any incarceration could pose a serious health risk. When the bosses were arrested, some of them were so old they needed doctors at their arraignment. And pretrial services recommends that bail remain as presently set. Go ahead and take them in a recess. When it looked like they could get 25 years to life in prison just for skimming a casino, sick or no f***ing sick, you knew people were going to get clipped. Number six, Mean Streets. All right, okay, thanks a lot, Lord. Thanks a lot for opening my eyes. We talk about penance and you send us through the door. Well, we play by your rules, don't. 
Well, don't we? After his 1972 film Boxcar Bertha, which was critically disregarded as a flop, Scorsese came back in full force with his powerful tale of urban sin and guilt that marked his arrival as an important cinematic voice. Mean Streets features electrifying performances from Harvey Keitel and Robert De Niro and showcases Scorsese's artistic strengths and weaknesses as he stood at the outset of his career. The other day, I ate a ricochet biscuit. Number 5. The Wolf of Wall Street. Oh no. No, Daddy doesn't even get to touch Mommy for a very, very, very long time. Daddy's really sorry about what he said in the other room. He didn't mean any of it. Daddy shouldn't waste his time. Scorsese's most recent directorial effort is the funny and self-referential biographical black comedy starring Leonardo DiCaprio's Jordan Belfort, a stockbroker living the high life who gets involved with crime, corruption, and the federal government. <laughs> I know you're not following what I'm saying anyway, right? That's, that's okay, that doesn't matter. The real question is this, was all this legal? Absolutely not. The Wolf of Wall Street was a nice change in direction for Scorsese, who has always been well known for creating scenarios revolving around the Mafia and criminals. And whilst Jordan Belfort is technically a criminal, the underlying humour creates a light-hearted outline that separates his film from Scorsese's more traditional flicks, and as a result is both loved and endured by its audience. Because last month you were a wine connoisseur, now you're an aspiring landscape architect, let me get that right. No, f you! Don't f***ing dare throw that f***ing water at me. Don't you f***ing dare. Number four, Raging Bull. <laughs> Reverting back to the classics, we have one of the greatest, if not the greatest, sports film ever made. Starring Robert De Niro in his Oscar-winning role as real-life boxer Jake LaMotta, Scorsese's Raging Bull follows LaMotta on his emotionally self-destructive journey through life as the violence and temper that leads him to the top in the ring destroys his life outside it. Bring it over! It's like a piece of charcoal! Bring it over here! You want your steak? Yeah, right yeah. now! Good. Here's steak. Whilst it can be regarded as quite a painful film to watch, it is nonetheless a seeming and powerful depiction about an unsympathetic hero. After ten rounds, Judge Rossi, eight to two, LaMotta. Judge Murphy, seven to three, LaMotta. LaMotta has won the fight. Number three, The Departed. Is this, is this something that you just want to go ahead and ask me? Because I'll give you the f***ing answer, all right? Frank, look at me. Look at me. I'm not the f***ing rat, okay? The film that finally earned Scorsese his Oscar for Best Director, as well as an Oscar for Best Picture, The Departed is a thoroughly engrossing gangster drama set on the streets of Boston with the gritty authenticity and morality that has infused Scorsese's past triumphs. Featuring some outstanding performances from Jack Nicholson, Leonardo DiCaprio, Matt Damon and Mark Wahlberg, The Departed is the ultimate cat and mouse film. I mean, I mean, he murdered somebody, right? The guy f***ing murdered somebody and you don't f***ing take him! What are you waiting for, honestly? I mean, do you want him to chop me up and feed me to the poor? Is that what you guys want? Yeah, well, that might stick. Will you shut up? Number two, Taxi Driver. I think you're a lonely person. I drive by this place a lot. I see you here. I see a lot of people around you. And I see all these phones and all this stuff on your desk. And it means nothing. And then when I came inside and I met you, I saw in your eyes and I saw the way you carried yourself. But you're not a happy person. Whilst a very tough choice between first and second place, Scorsese's dark and gritty neo noir psychological thriller just missed top spot. But don't let that fool you. Taxi Driver is arguably one of the greatest feats of cinema ever made, and as a result can be boasted as a masterpiece. A film that leaves its audience as isolated as its lead character, Taxi Driver is a film that cannot go unseen. It's widely considered as one of the greatest American movies of all time, and there's good reason for that. Here is a man who would not take it anymore. A man who stood up against the scum, the c**ts, the dogs, the filth, the shit. Here is someone who stood up. Here is... Before we reveal our number one film, here are some honourable mentions that didn't quite cut the list. Shutter Island. Who the f*** are you? Who are you? Hugo. I'd imagine the whole world was one big machine. Cape Fear. 
Counselor! Is that you? Counselor! Come out, come out, wherever you are! The last waltz. The last temptation of Christ. Believe me, those who are laughing now will be crying later. Those whose stomachs are filled now will be hungry later, and the rich will be poor forever. Number one, Goodfellas. Well, I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you. I make you laugh, I'm here to f amuse you. What do you mean funny? Funny how? How am I funny? Get the f out of here, Tommy. <laughs> you mother I almost had him! I almost had him! <laughs> Finishing off our list of Scorsese's monumental career is his crime epic that is the true definition of a masterpiece. Often coming just behind The Godfather as the best gangster film ever made, Goodfellas follows Ray Liotta's career criminal Henry Hill as he reminisces upon his life of crime in this true life story. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. <laughs> Scorsese depicts the perfect blend of drama, gritty violence and humour as we see the dark side of the American dream played out over 25 years of a wise guy's life. Hard hitting and stylish, Goodfellas is a cinematic classic that is truly the high point of Scorsese's career. When they found Carbone in the meat truck, he was frozen so stiff it took them two days to thaw him out for the autopsy. Thank you for watching. Are there any films we forgot to mention? Leave your opinions in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for new videos every Monday.